Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio coming to you here on this Friday. Hope you're ready for the weekend, and uh, we're going to get you headed that way. Alec Lasley from thehoosier.com joins us now. Um, first of all, Indiana had a big night last night, obviously, uh, getting a, I hate to call it a signature win, but it's certainly Mike Woodson's first Signature win, I guess you'd say, of his tenure for Indiana. Uh, a great Big Ten win over the 13th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes, and not just the win; it's it's uh, how they got, how they achieved it. Um, of course, Trey Jackson Davis, it was on his back, but they did it in a way with the rest of the team, kind of lending a hand, but not doing a whole lot statistically. Yeah, I mean, you you look at it, right? He had 16 of the 33 first half points, and the rest of the team was 6 of 21 in that first half. And I think that was, uh, while everyone looked at that that first 20 minutes as what a great 20 minutes of basketball it was, when when you kind of look a little bit deeper, it was a little bit concerning that no one else really showed up for for that half um, in the you know in the scoring column, which you know we've seen at times. Indiana really struggled to put together a full 40 games, and we didn't really know how Trace Jackson Davis was going to be able to to kind of live up to that first half in the second half. So for, for them to, to put together that full 40 minutes, for Trace Jackson Davis to put together uh, a full 40 minutes as well, and to get some help when he really needed it in, in that kind of middle part of the second half from a bunch of different guys in, in different ways, maybe not just in the scoring column, but you know, defensively or, or grabbing an offensive rebound or Parker Stewart hitting a timely three or anything like that. It did, it really put together a, a really complete game for Indiana, one that they needed. Um, definitely the best game uh, this this season for Indiana and one of the most complete games, I would say, over the last few seasons uh, from an offensive standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, from an energy standpoint, right? I mean, you maybe take out the first five minutes of the game from an energy standpoint, but um, 35 minutes of, of really, really high energy. And the, the fans obviously showed out for that too. Um, so we just kind of look forward to uh, the next, you know, few home games here where the students are going to be back in full force. And, um, you know, the, the attention just kind of turns to Indiana being able to, to win on the road uh, at this point because they've proven that, that they're a, a very difficult team to beat at home. Uh, yeah, so not only that, it – it seemed, while statistically uh, the rest of the team didn't really kick in, they did in other ways. They didn't turn the ball over last night as a team. You had, what, nine, what was it, nine turn, total turnovers? And after averaging uh, 15 nearly a game, they've only had 15 total in their last two games. So that's a team effort right there. And that gets to everyone. So they weren't making a lot of mistakes, number one. Number two, I don't know if it was because of uh, uh, Trevor, uh, um, Trey Galloway's spark, and, and I'm kind of getting I don't want to say tired of talking about it because everyone's talking about it, but it's it was palpable, but it led to other things, and I think it led to this team being able to be successful while stinking up statistically. They were able to do all the other things they needed to do to help win that game, uh, and that's. That's one of the things I saw Trey Galloway bring bigger than anything last night. Yeah, and you know we've talked about this uh, throughout the course of this season since he's been out for what seems like the majority of the year up to this point, right? But the the things that he do that, that he does are, are not the things that he's going to get credit for realistically, right? He's not going to be one that's going to put up ten points a game. He's not going to be one who's going to make always the flashy plays, uh, but he's always going to bring the energy. We saw that last night when right when he came into the game, almost made an impact immediately. Um, but he had four assists to one turnover. The ability that he has to get into the middle of the, the defense, to penetrate the defense, something that um, the other IU guards have kind of struggled with, at least to do consistently. Um, but the, the ability that he has to do that under control I think is something that is very underrated and, and something that we saw a lot last night. Um, just being able to, to make those key plays in the middle of that defense, whether it, whether it leads to an assist, whether it's an, you know, a hockey assist or whether it's just a, a smart play that doesn't turn the ball over. Um, but, but he's someone who I've always said is going to get significant minutes when he's healthy because he does all those little things that you need from a role player in order to win big games and, you know, in order to, to make it, deep in an NCAA tournament or 
uh, you know, compete atop of, you know, a power five conference. And, and that's one thing that I think a lot of people saw last night, just that spark that he brought that the high IQ that he has and the ability to defend multiple positions, get his hands in the passing lane and, and generate some sort of offense in the, the fast break or the secondary break, which when Indiana has that, they're, they're so much better of a team because we heard Mike Woodson talk about earlier uh, this, this week, just the struggles they've had in the half court. So he, he just brings a, a whole new dimension of energy to that team that they definitely have been lacking since, since he went out. Yeah. And, and like I said, I had seen him uh, yeah, before just running around the court and that's kind of all I had saw him really doing was just running around the court. Now there, there, there was a purpose and uh, it was like, wow. Um, it, it was almost shocking to see the difference that he made um, just, th just his presence out there. And that's a, a great positive for Indiana moving forward because they needed something. This offense was just extraordinarily stagnant. There was very little to no movement uh, with this offense. Now, all of a sudden, even guys like Parker Stewart seem to be moving, looking for shots. He, he, he uh, got to the rim last night once. I don't know that I've seen him drive this Big Ten season. Uh, he has not shot a free throw yet, so hasn't been driving much. But just the impetus to, uh, of getting that offense moving, uh, I can't believe that that's Trey Galloway is the impetus for that. But regardless, if it's just been practice or whatever, that offense was moving last night, and it made a tremendous difference. Yeah, and you know one thing you brought up about Parker Stewart, that, he made a, a that layup early in the game there. That was only his fourth made two point field goal all season. Um, he made one obviously against uh, Penn state, but then you have to go back to uh, Louisiana for that, that other two made uh, two point field goal. So j just to kind of show you the, the inability that Indiana's guards have had to kind of penetrate the defense, obviously Parker Stewart's never going to be that kind of guy, uh, but just that energy and that spark, like we've, we've been talking about that the Trey Galloway brings and that different dimension that you don't have from those other Indiana guards. You know, Rob Fennessy is a guy who, has, has shown it in spurts over his entire career, right? The ability to get into the paint, but not always finish. Uh, obviously, Xavier Johnson can get into the paint, but not always finish. And, and we've seen the kind of out of control plays that he's had uh, at times as well. Trey Galloway can get into the paint. He's shown the ability to finish, but he's also shown the ability to make the smart play. Not always the, the flashy play, like we said, but the, the smart play. And that's what you need especially if you have an All-American forward in Trace Jackson Davis and a very, very good supplemental player in Race Thompson. Just get them touches. Don't turn the ball over in the half-court setting and be able to penetrate the defense in certain ways. And, you know, we, obviously it showed last night just that, that offensive firepower that Indiana does have um, from time to time. Uh, and uh, offensively, I, I don't want to turn this into the Trey Galloway show, but three of five did not push – uh, things take too many shots. His, uh, his ability to get to the rim last night was something that I did not see last year. I saw him running around a lot and kicking the ball back out, but he actually scored, went to the rim with the uh, intent to score and su was successful in doing that last night. Uh, he's grown up a little bit, uh, you can see. Yeah, and I mean, he plays with a sense of urgency, and, and that's something that I don't think you get a lot, especially with the younger players, um, but you know, maybe it does help that, that he is a coach's son. He, he just knows how to play the game. He knows when to push the pace. He knows when to slow it down. He knows when to attack. He knows when to pull it out. Um, and, and again, that's, you know, what we've been saying. That's the one thing that Indiana was truly missing from that backcourt, but just more importantly from those perimeter players. Um, but, you know, the, the bigger issue that I have is well, when you look at Indiana shooting last night, obviously, Oh, their, their worst three-point shooting performance uh, of the season, just two of 15. And and you you look at what they've done this season. Miller Cops not not really found his role yet. He, he's not very consistent so far up, you know, through 13 games here. Xavier Johnson and Rob Finnessy are never going to be guys who you expect to make threes. Tamar Bates has really fallen off over the last four or five games here. Um, a guy who was making one to two threes a game in the, in the first half of the season – and I think the big issue moving forward is, you know, is Indiana going to be able to sustain that early three-point shooting uh, power that they had? 
Because if Parker Stewart has an off night, and we've seen him have some off nights recently, where are they going to get that that three point shooting from? You may get it. You know, Jordan Geronimo hit a three last night, but you don't expect him to make that. Obviously, Trey Galloway is not that kind of guy. So I, I think as good as this performance was, I don't think everyone's going to expect Trey Galloway to bring that spark every single game, and and he shouldn't be expected to, right? You know, he, he's a second year player. And this team should be able to get up for Big Ten games consistently. And you shouldn't need a player returning after a 10-game absence to bring that spark. So if Indiana can't find a way to make shots consistently from the outside, it's not going to matter what kind of spark they have. They're not going to be able to win games like this if they shoot that poorly every single game. I agree, uh, but I, I do think that Trey Galloway will bring that spark. I think that's him. I think part of it is growing up being a coach's son. He had to bring it every game because he was the coach's son, and he seems like that type of kid that, well, I can't do this because I'm the coach's son, so now I've got to bust my ass a little bit harder to show that I'm not being played favorites. I think that he will bring that every time. I, I truly do. Um, I, I think that's going to be part of who Trey Galloway is on and off the floor every time. I, I think that you're going to see that um, every I, time out there. I really do. I, I don't disagree with that. I just I, I feel like it's a bit concerning, though, if you have to look to your seventh or eighth guy on the bench to, to bring that spark. So, you know, maybe you look at adjusting the lineup, right? You know, Miller Cop hasn't – Shown that ability to be consistent as of yet, but do you? But, but how much do you lose when you bring in Trey Galloway off the bench? Is a great, great thing for for Mike Woodson to have, and to lose that, and to 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 in turn say bring Miller Cop off the bench, man, you're losing a lot. Well, I I agree, but in the in the grand scheme of things, right? Indiana's had some really really slow starts, especially on the road. And in the Big Ten, you can't get off to a slow start. And, and that's where you're going to have to bring your own energy. I don't see a lot of energy from that starting lineup um, unless Xavier Johnson or Trace Jackson Davis get off to a scorching hot start. Um, they're obviously the, the more emotional leaders on that team. You don't get much from Parker Stewart or uh, Miller Cop emotionally. Uh, so you, you're, you're going to need – that's something that obviously Mike Woodson – uh, knows what he's doing with his lineups. He knows what he's doing with his rotation. He did say earlier this week, though, that um, he needs to get back to finding a more consistent rotation. Uh, I think we're going to slowly be able to figure that out over the next few games. But, you know, it, that, that starting lineup is something to not not worry about. But, again, you, you are going to need to find ways to supplement Parker Stewart's shooting with someone in the second unit. Um Maybe that, again, is Miller Cop. He, he has a great ability to move without the ball. Um, you, you stagger some of those minutes where you still have him and Trey Galloway playing along each other and, and bring in a, you know, Rob Finnessy or anything like that and have um, more driving and, and slashing playmakers instead of scoring playmakers uh, on the floor to, to kind of open things up for, for Miller Cop and, and kind of see, see what you can do with that. But um, obviously, there, there's no question about it. You don't want to lose that spark off the bench. But at the same time, I think for Indiana to be able to reach their full potential, you need to find that second shooter and you need to find a way to kind of wake Miller Cop out of this this whatever slump he's in right now because he, he does not bring a lot to the floor unless he's making shots right now. Um, that's something that Mike Woodson really was pushing for him when he you know initially committed to Indiana to be more of a playmaker, to, to use more of that uh, versatility, whether it be defensively or rebounding the ball. Uh, we just haven't seen that. Um, so I think I think Mike Woodson and in Indiana need to do something just to to figure out where Miller Cop fits in that. If that is off the off the bench and, and brings a little spark, a scoring punch off the bench, that's great. But, you know, he, he's just not bringing anything to the floor consistently right now in that starting lineup. No, and I agree. And that's uh, something that they have to find because – uh, but again, when if you were to make that change and, and made that Trey Galloway, you want somebody coming in off that bench that's going to have that spark. Now, whether that's Jordan Geronimo, that's very possible because he offers that, uh, not to the to the extent that that Trey Galloway. But but Miller Cop has just he very very experienced player, but he has just been searching for his place in this in this uh, offense. And knowing that it runs through Trace Jackson Davis, I think that Trey Galloway 
does not have a, a problem at all of learning how to integrate himself into that offense with Trace Jackson, Trace Jackson Davis in it and, and acclimate himself to it where Miller's having that problem. He, he just, uh, we saw him take a couple of shots late last night, uh, hit a couple of those shots, but that was late in the game uh, to where he kind of exerted himself. He just, I mean, it was the late, late minute. So he does not know where to to try to to put his shot in uh, uh, up until then. And and I think that's that's a partial problem. But maybe that's still just learning problems for this team as they continue to get better and what's part of what will make this team better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the biggest thing with, uh, with the difference between him and Parker Stewart is Parker Stewart hasn't really forced a lot this season. He's just kind of taken what's been given to him. Um, you know, he's taken a couple contested threes, but I think a, a guy who's shooting 45 plus percent, you, you give him that, that bit of a green light with Miller copy. Obviously, like we said, he, he's not shooting that percentage from deep. He's not really being able to find a way to impact the game um, from, from shooting twos. And so he does seem to force threes a lot. And I think early in the game, he's trying to force the game to, to kind of give him some sort of rhythm uh, you know, rather than just kind of playing, playing the game and letting whatever happens happen. And, and I think that's the biggest thing with, with him. Um, but, you know, I, I think in the whole grand scheme of things, you, you look at Tamar Bates, someone who we haven't really talked about as that spark off of the bench. If you do move Trey Galloway to the starting lineup, um, cause he's a big energy guy as well, a guy who can get hot in a hurry and a guy who can provide that scoring punch. So I think, you know, there, there's still a lot of moving pieces with, uh, with this Indiana roster, and that's what happens when you bring in so many new faces and a new coach and a new staff. So um, I think Indiana fans, though, have to be extremely happy with that performance last night and what it what it will show uh, moving forward here in the Big Ten.